Well, hello. This is not my usual type of game. This is A Skeptic's Guide to Magic. It's a game that's not out yet. Uh, it gets released on Friday the 16th of August. I got sent a free copy. And I thought it was rather intriguing. So I thought I'd give it a go. Don't worry, the next video will be a ravage one. I think I'm fine with that. Now, against my better judgment, I've left the music on. But yeah, what appealed to me the most about this was an adventure game with a British setting, at least at the start. 1993. I remember 1993. And I really like the art style. Bloody mess. Ah, bloody mess. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to play this through for about ooh, half an hour or so. And we'll see what it's like. Right. Okay, I'm Lester, I'm a forensic officer. <laughs> I was wondering that myself. Oh, nobody's curious about the decoration. phenomenon actually the satanic panic and um, it actually did have hold in the UK about this time there were a number of arrests up on the Orkney Islands after allegations of uh, satanic ritual abuse uh, many families actually had their children taken away from them because of it although it later turned out that um, it was all abject nonsense but the effects are very long-lasting yeah, there has never been a single substantiated case of static ritual abuse. Cool. Well, let's use my forensic kit. Really? Well, I friggin' did. Ah, uh, maybe a magic cape from Hardy Alice. Surprised not Libra Null or Libra Chaos. Really? Oh, I suppose. <laughs> You're never too old to play Dungeons and Dragons, come on. Ooh. 
tell me he's a bouncing vampire. Oh. I think he's got a bit Chinese there. Did you see? It's actually quite charmingly written. Ooh. Ah. This reminds me of um, some of the adventure games back in the day. Like uh, Beneath the Steel Sky. Anyone ever play that? Love that one. It had art by uh, Brian Bolland. Some people will know as uh, one of the illustrators of 2000 AD, the comic. speech. <laughs> okay, it's a bit on rails at the moment. Apologies if I'm clicking through the text too quickly for you. I, I read quickly. Swish. Yeah, it's maybe a consequence of my day job. I have to uh, read a lot of newspapers and reports very fast. like to see if they've um, eh, bothered to put in bits for some of the other things. <laughs> That's nice. This has genuinely got a very nice sort of witty little sense of humour. Country is not some kind of um, weird metaphor or analogy. The area around there really is called the Black Country. <laughs> oh no, police line, do not cross. I was a student uh, living with my friend Matt. Uh, our flat was legendary for, well, quite a number of reasons. Um, 
but uh, our kitchen got so bad that eventually we fenced it off with police line do not cross tape. Paid more attention there. Uh, there were three things I needed, weren't there? Violet weed, red dot weed, honeysuckle berries, that was the one. In fact, there was a corollary to the police line tape in our kitchen. Um, after we fenced it off, we just never went back in. Uh, but one time, a police officer turned up at the door, uh, investigating a crime in the area, and our kitchen was directly across from the front door, and he saw the police line do not cross tape, and asked where we'd got it from. Oops. Uh, the correct answer was not an active crime scene. Did I swear? <laughs> well, why wouldn't you? Something foreign. I guess I'm going to look through them in order. Vegans. Mm -hmm. Does he mean brazier? Yeah, he does mean brazier. Quite right. Oh, 
I'm guessing the developers are actually British because the sort of mode and manner of speech and the whole sort of prosody is very much uh, British. Ah. Well, this is absolutely charming. What oh, the lodge is a registered trademark somehow. Mm hmm. Ordinarily, I'm not um, I'm not much of a fan of sort of text-heavy uh, adventuring, but the writing's quite charming. This is the kind of thing that annoys me because, um, as a character, I, I would know my way down to the front desk. Scientist. Blair? Yeah, good man. It's not a game, hey, hey. Self referential. No, 
now. <laughs> this reminds me of an Armstrong and Miller sketch. Indeed. Perhaps it will. Science service are civilians, but um, forensic investigators are police, aren't they? Yeah, I was just wondering why everyone in this appeared to be about 20 years old. Powers beyond their comprehension. vending machine on the streets of Birmingham. Deep for nineteen year olds. Say nineteen ninety three, how old was I then? Ah, uh, twenty one. Well, roughly. Of course, depending on what time of year it was, could be twenty. Gosh, 
um, back at, at this time. I had a couple of friends who were uh, deeply into witchcraft and uh, some friends who did sort of neo-paganism and a lot of friends who played uh, Vampire the Masquerade as a live role-playing game uh, across the whole city. Uh, I think there were about 50 people playing. It was really tough and tedious. Uh, Matt and I were not playing, but most of our friends were. And the thing is, you're sitting in the pub and uh, someone walks in and they time into the game and suddenly it's all celerity spells and oh god. And, oh, it's the prince. And it's, like, it's Dave and it's his round. I remember my friend Charles, what was, he was into Seven Sabbats for witches, I think. Ah. Then a little while later on, we met uh, a Buddhist priest for the first time. I know an awful lot of Buddhists these days. Uh, real ones, not not Western people who dress up and buy expensive yoga mats. In fact, uh, my first encounter with the uh, Buddhist priest was well, a, a little like some of this story. Uh, uh -huh. I was sitting at home one night. with my friend uh, Charles. He was the guy who was into magic and stuff. Uh -huh. And um, there was a knock at our door. And we answered the door and there is a Buddhist priest standing there in full regalia. I was like, oh, oh you look interesting. You better come in. And so, yeah, we brought him into the house. And... Uh, Right, what's the deal with you? He said, oh, I was meditating at the Dharma Center in Moscow and I realized that uh, <laughs> I needed to be somewhere else and that uh, if I went there, I would find some people who could help me. Hey! That's the um, shot from the screenshot from the store page. God, I had a friend about this time who went shop about Amigas. No. Ow. Ow. Oops, I keep accidentally pressing things. But yeah, we were talking to this uh, Buddhist priest and um, I can empty the cash register. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was explaining that uh, he went down the airport, bought a plane ticket for a country that felt right, and that when he'd arrived in the country, he travelled around until uh, he felt he was in the right place. And uh, And that, yes, when he'd reached the, um, the right city, he'd walked around the streets until he was outside the house that felt like the right one. And yeah, I did ask him, so how many doors did you knock on before you came to ours? He said, oh, yours was the first one. I was like, hmm, okay. Yeah, so we asked him 
uh, what kind of thing he needed help with. <laughs> oh. yeah, first go for. Uh, yes, we did end up helping that uh, Buddhist priest. Uh, I've known him for many years. I tell you, it's it's an awful lot of uh -huh. interesting. Go on. Things that are available. Peppy, that's a bit of a American way of putting things. these days. I mean, you know, you might think it sounds uh, pretty cool or interesting to have a Buddhist priest turn up at your door and not quite tell you the chosen one or anything, but you know, I, I've ended up going to like, Tibet and Nepal and places like that because of this. Uh, I've been to so many Chuffin monasteries, uh, I know various um, abbots and monks and nuns and all sorts. That sounds cool and all, but... So I always like to nosy at background elements to see if they've actually made a, an effort. Yeah, they have. Hmm, well, I don't know where to go, really. But, yeah, stuff like um, many of the adventures I've had over the years are, um, well, they take a lot of time up. It's time when you're not doing other things. and things that uh, I became a uh, Reiki master. Reiki is one of these energy healing type things. Uh, I, I have no interest in any of these things, uh, but... Uh, yes! Oh, they've done their... <laughs> they've done their research. Yeah, I mean, I have no interest in Reiki, but... Uh, I think, was I the, the second Reiki master in the UK? Yeah, it turns out I was entirely able to do my Reiki level 1, level 2 and masters without um, believing in anything or uh, caring about anything. Go on, tell me it's Amiga. Oh, I wanted to say it was Amiga 1200. Uh, even the Reiki thing was just another of my annoying adventures. There's a lady called Phyllis Furumoto. Uh, who 
was attempting to trademark the term Reiki. It's originally a Japanese thing. Ooh, what's in this door? Ah, dark room. Don't I? I took a bunch of photographs earlier. But if you are a Reiki practitioner or you know someone who is, um, chances are uh, some of the coursework that you uh, followed was written by my old friend Charles. And um, there's also a pretty good chance that uh, some of the materials that uh, you've used uh, feature artwork that I drew. is like. All right, Leicester. Or at least we're not in Leicestershire. Quasimodo, everyone's got nicknames. Does. Oh. oh, I didn't chuff him now. Trouble is, there's many adventure games. Um, you need to sort of go around trying everything and picking up everything. Whereas this one seems uh, a lot more uh, sort of logical or rational. I wonder what this was made in. Lester. Bugger off, Lester. I can't tell from the Midlands accent. Okay. Pages. Yeah, so there really is a bunch of, yeah. sort of looking and searching around. program that in. Oh god. Matt and I actually had an industrial microwave back in our flat. It was uh, ridiculously powerful. Right, I don't need to see the sergeant, I don't need to see the inspector. Surely that's another interview room. No observation. <laughs> Got one toilet. Ow.
Yeah, see, surely I would know what all these rooms are. You know, my character would. Ooh. Is there a briefing room? Uh-huh. Smith Motors, eh? That business directory has... Um, Changed its cover since I picked it up. Uh, do I need to use a telephone in order to look at the business directory? Items, why can't I click on any of these? Still getting the hang in the interface, yep. If I ask him again, is he going to say the same thing? <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Okay. Strange though, there's a complete lack of telephones around. that I need to get down to Smith Motors. side. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure I need to go to Smith Motors. So I just click on. Oh, I can click in the middle of nowhere. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I do want to check out that vending machine. Well, I think... This is about the point that I'm going to uh, leave this. Yeah, you might be thirsty later. Uh, I wish I could figure out how to... Um, how to use the business route, okay. There isn't a clock running or anything. Oh, but we'll let me go out there. But yeah, I think this is uh, a very charming game. I would have bought this. I will continue playing this. I will continue to enjoy it. I like the way it's written. Uh, I like the sense of humour. Yeah, Colonel Hatley tells me it's. Uh -huh. uh, the art style's charming. Yes, I would say overall it's a charming game. Uh, charming is a word I overuse, but. This is delightful. I like it. Anyway, uh, that's where I'm going to leave this for today. I can recommend it. It comes out on Friday. Um, I'll put a link to the Steam uh, page below and uh, see what you think. Hmm. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm off to go down to a rain-soaked music festival. And... Um, well, I'm going to be drinking despite it being a Sunday morning. Hmm. And uh, let's see. 
yeah, the next video, it will be a ravage one. So I shall see you anon. Draw.